Uh, like, I need, I need... <laughs> yes, a shot at Firewall. <laughs> you have a shot at Firewall. And we're live. I want one. <laughs> yes, getting chat drunk at 8.30 in the morning is not the best no. idea. <laughs> uh, good morning. Well, it's... Uh, Ooh, it's 8.50 a.m. on the 24th of July. It's super early, and we're going to play some D&D. Uh, I am not on camera today because of reasons, but we're going to have some fun anyways. Um, session 27, amply titled Raging Rivers for some reason. But, uh, yeah, we had some fun last week, and we had a little bit of combat, but we'll do a recap right quick and then get into it. Uh, so I'll let Arcadia take it away for this. Okay, well, as we start this session with uh, Bryn, who normally, who regularly plays Camos, is was playing Corbin in his absence. Um, it starts off at the end of the party, the feast in honor of Honora and Lord Gluthaven. Um, and as they're leaving, Nicodemus and Arcadia notice in the corner... Uh, an Amazon, and Nicodemus recognizes her as the person they fought. He and Corbin and um, Camos fought <clears throat> a while ago, who said, uh, tell Arcadia, Ileana says hello. So Arcadia quickly walks up to her. Um, she goes to one knee, puts her fist on her chest, and Mitra snoops from a distance, and she says, Ileana, and Ileana responds, traitor. And you find through this discussion that Ileana has been sent to bring Arcadia back to Themis, that she had left the island a year ago. And Arcadia pleads with her and says that she was on her way back to both Themis and to her when she was stopped by the Oracle. She explains how the Oracle has set this party together she says to her, do you really think it's my choice to be with men? But in their defense, they are more or less battle-worthy companions. And um, she is, it was grouped together with them by the Oracle. She says that uh, she found Ophia, her mother, and that she needs to go to Mitros to find out where in the Forgotten Sea the Island of the Dragon is. Demetrius comes up and defends um, Arcadia from Ileana, but Ileana is you uh, talk keeps on telling that she's a traitor. Why didn't she come back? And um, you find from Arcadia that she says, "I shared everything with you. Uh, don't throw away the past five years together." Um, Ileana says that you we had our moment. You lay with me one night and then you left and. Uh, when Demetrius says that perhaps the Amazons were we uh, were not the ones uh, who abandoned her, that are the real traitors because they abandoned her mother, Ileana says that uh, Ophia was weak, which enrages Arcadia um, and says, how dare you, what has happened to you in the year I've been gone? Ileana says, I've come to my senses, my feelings I had for you dulled my senses and now that they are. Now uh, I see more clearly than Arcadia says. She has nothing more to say to her. Um, she walks to her chamber, wiping her eyes, and Ileana disappears into the night. So we sleep in the palace. In the morning, uh, we find that Nicodemus is still attached to the pickle. Uh, we ask Kyra if she would like to join us, um, and he, he, she will. Um, Folan is also joining us. Um, Kyra's centaur, or I guess Kyra is his writer. Um, Arcadia didn't go to breakfast. Looks like she hasn't slept at all and looks in especially bad mood as well as being sad. Um, as we are heading out, Kyra gives her a note that some that a pretty lady left for her. Um, the players don't know this, um, but the Twitch chat people would know and Arcadia knows that what it says is, sorry for the ruse, we are being watched with the initial I. Uh, we travel for about 15 minutes, meet the dragon riders, and uh, you find that 
there weren't any dragon riders left in the world until Acastus had several dragon eggs given to him several years ago and is trying to restart the dragon riders. And Acastus is the king of Mitros, the husband of Valis, who is the goddess of wisdom and also Kyra's sister. We go about a half a day's journey. Um, it's Nico his, has a new cantrip that he acquired Druidcraft, and he is making flowers bloom along the path to try to cheer Arcadia up. Um, Nyx and Arcadia see what looks like a shoddily made Amazonian cloak. She recognizes it as Corinna's. We run up uh, into a maenad and three goatlings. After a... Um. Okay. Scatter. <laughs> Let's say it wasn't just me. I thought it was me. Death. Faith, uh, you like broke up really bad. Dallas internet. She can't. Can't. Dallas has great internet, so it's not it. <laughs> 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 Either that or um Can you still hear me? Yeah now no, we can. Now we can. Oh, what happened? The goat knocked you out. The goat. Oh. How when did it knock me out? What was I saying? Uh you came across a cloak. Oh, came across a cloak. Um it is Corinna's we fight a maenad and three goatlings. Uh the maenad charms some of us. Uh even though we put earwax in our it wax in our ears, um, but we eventually beat them. We find it is Corinna. Uh, Kyra comes up to Arcadia and says to her, now one must think if she is stressed like you, if maybe you had a hand in her death, um, and uh, writes her name in her black book. Arcadia goes to Corinna's body, finds a necklace that she can bring back to her father. Amitria spends gold to cast ceremony on the big burial. And we notice as Emetrius, well, Arcadia and Nicodemus notice as Emetrius is performing the ritual that Kyra has a drink in her hand and she pours a little bit onto the ground. Um, as we continue on to Metros, Emetrius wants to detour to the Mithril Mines. We find Vulcan there who's just setting up and the salamander is sitting in her hot tub. Emetrius has to make amends with her because she has something tied to his epic path. So she first, uh, he offers to do her a favor and she asks for two, one in the future and one right now in which uh, she wants him to beg her forgiveness, which he swallows his pride and does. So she, he tells, she tells him that he needs a weapon power, powerful enough to fight a dragon and the Gigans of Yonder supposedly forged such weapons in the first war. If he wants more information, he can seek out the fates and seek the wisdom of the sun god under the constellation of the chariots. He will surely help him find the revenge that he seeks. Corbin notices, uh, recognizes that the island of yonder is where his armor is, that Gaius stole it and put it there. Um, then the salamander asks Demetrius to join her in her hot lava tub. Uh, he is hesitant and it starts to scald him. And so then she sighs, disappears for a couple of seconds and tosses beautiful plate armor of fire resistance for him. Um, and it looks like they have made amends. He admits that calling her a bitch was a mistake. And she gives him a word of advice. Be careful of how he talks to some people. And he said it's one of his weaknesses. Um, Camos gives Vulcan a bottle of scotch because Vulcan is dying for a drink. Um, Nico checks that the two-headed dogs and the cockatrices are still there and being taken care of. And we spend the night there during which Ametrius attunes to his armor. So in the next morning, which is now Thursday, day 21, um, you notice that Arcadia, as she normally does, getting up uh, early and doing military stretches and warm-ups, is using, uh, shooting at a target that has a goat head on it. Oh, by the way, um, in the previous encounter with um, the maenads and the goatlings, uh, you see Arcadia shoot the arrow, and she um, does a little different stance that um, Atalanta taught her, and she um, does a lot of damage with her new sharpshooter abilities. 
Um, as we continue, we notice it is abnormally quiet on the path, and we are, encounter two massive cyclops that were sent by Lord Sidon. Um, Camus casts Fireball. I think that's the first time he's been able to do that on his own without the spell just being stored in the, the one that, the freebie. Um, and Nico uh, casts Conjure Animals and casts, uh, Conjures Brown Bears for the first time. Uh, Ametrius has used his Conjuring Presence and scares, uh, frightens one of the Cyclops. Um, Kyra actually, um, Camos, uh, he um, challenged her by saying she doesn't do anything. She um, cast Lightning Bolt and blasted one of the Cyclops. Um, but when Camos hits the same Cyclops with Magic Missile, she calls out, oh, oh, it's him. So both of their Cyclops recognize Camos. But before we can do anything, um, we end up killing them. Um, at one point, well, Demetrius goes down twice. The second time, the one of the Cyclops hits him twice um, while he's down. And Arcadia sends Nyx to stabilize him. Uh-oh. Robot. Hi. So, um, and the academias are in the clubs. Um, You're still the the on Arcadia. I blame the Mac. <laughs> But uh, I think she about reached the end of. Uh... Yeah, we were just sitting at uh, killing the cyclops, and then we ended with um, uh, Nico and Amitris uh, 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 trying to cut out one of the eyeballs. And the my... it was supposed to make a uh, survival check, wasn't it? Um. Yeah, medicine. Or medicine, Joe. Yeah, yeah, we ended last week early because my internet just went... Like, yeah. I, I completely lost power. Well, let me... Let me first pull, uh, hold open the eyelids, and then you can do the check uh, with advantage, Nico. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and how... Are you going to take, like, a long time trying to, like, figure it out? Or you just kind of, like, kind of go in there and scoop it out? I'm going to take my time. I mean, I'm not going to just... Do it with a spoon or anything. Well, maybe a spoon would work really good. <laughs> or a spork. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll slice open the eyelid and very carefully to get it out, and then pop it out, and then cut off the uh, stalk. I don't okay. know what that's called. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Let me. Um, big, big ass eyeball. Let me try to get that there. Everybody's having trouble this morning with their computers. I'm not. I'm not. I'm good today. At, at least for now. There we go. Yeah. So, tell me, uh, paint this picture for me. Uh, just how how delicately are we are we doing that? Make a, uh, a very short. Let me see what I got here. I should have a knife with me. What's that? Small spin? knife. Morning. Um, nope. So I, I take a small knife and uh, slice open the uh, eyelid, peel it back uh, with the help of Demetrius. He holds it open and I squeeze on each side of the eye and or on the face and down with my thumbs and pop the eyelid out or the eyeball out. I grab it, pull it out, 
slice off the stock, and hand it over to Demetrius. Yeah, and you do that like with fine precision. Like when you pull out the eyeball, it almost looks like it's as if it's still alive. But uh, yeah, you, you get one fully intact uh, eyeball. I will wrap it in a cloth and put it in the bag of holding. All right. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Is he like a pro cutting out eyeballs? Apparently. Um, and at this point, I'd say probably 10 minutes maybe have gone by. And uh, um, Kyra points up and uh, I point out to the distance and uh, she says, look, we're, we're getting close. And uh, y'all can see that it's kind of, the weather, it's kind of getting like, even though it's middle of the afternoon, it's like starting to storm or like rain and uh, storm, and you can see it all in the distance. Like if you ever seen a storm approach, you you would know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and the other uh, cyclops, its eye was destroyed, right? Yes, because uh, Kara got pissed at it and like just repeatedly stabbed it in the eye. Alright, well, I want to cut off this one's head. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, leave the basilisk head on the ground here and I'll swap it for the cyclops head <laughs> to uh, carry on my saddlebag. Nice. So, drip, you're, you just you're like, you're going to drain it of blood first? You're just going to say, F it and dump it in the bag? No, I'm, I'm not going to put it in a bag. I'm going to do it uh, like uh, the witcher does. Oh, yeah, okay. And hang okay. it from my uh, saddlebags. Nice. Oh yeah, and, and it's on you. So your flank's gonna get all bloody and. Uh, I'll, uh, I don't know. I uh, like. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll hold it up and I'll shake it a little bit, like so that the blood is like out. I'm not sure if you have to drain it, but after a while, I think I had. I mean, it will drip, of course, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll just uh, carry a cyclops head with me as the nice. new trophy. Nice. Alright, uh, and you also see kind of um, the dragon riders come, kind of, one of them come, kind of comes flying back and uh, he says, well if you're done playing with your food now, can we continue? <laughs> and uh, Amitya says, I thought I told you guys to get uh, to Mitros and uh, announce our uh, arrival. Oh, they know you're coming. And uh, then they fly off. So uh, it's about, uh, I'd say maybe, maybe another hour to get towards the city. But uh, eventually you start to approach it, uh, especially Nico, because you lived here. Uh, you're reminded of its immense scale. Uh, its walls and temples sprawl across the foundations of Mount Vulcan, and its great harbor stretches for miles across the coast. This is the Jewel of Philia, the bastion of mortal civilization. Uh, essentially, in uh, city terms for real life, this is kind of like L.A. or Tokyo, if you will. <laughs> like, massive. Uh, but something is wrong. Uh, massive, swirling black clouds loom over the city, the wind battering its ships and tearing at its banners. Howling gales greet you as you draw closer to the city gates, and it becomes difficult just to put one foot in front of the other. The centurions at the royal gate urgently beckon you into the city as torrential rain hammers down. And glancing up into the sky, you notice that something ominous has materialized within the spinning eye of this hurricane. It's the scowling visage of Sidon, Lord of Storms. His angry eyes robe the city until they abruptly lock onto your exact position. Uh, the Titan himself conjures a crackling white bolt of lightning and hurls it straight at you. Oh, how uh, much? And we'll do this. Uh, 
Who's the, who's the lowest? Who's the lowest? Oh, Metrius. Oh, of course, Demetrius. And I have only one HP left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, so you're going to get hit by this lightning bolt. Again, this guy. Well, Amitius, before that happens, he's as just as ugly as I remember him. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have said that. He <laughs> probably not. Let me, let me get this. Corbin, on. Corbin will wave and say, hey, Pops. He does. He should have that. I swear, if he doesn't have this actual soul, I'm gonna be pissy. Cool. Uh... The one guy that's gonna be um, impossible to carry into the city. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll just take you off this map. All right. So yes, the lightning bolt goes and hits Amitrius. Why is it giving me errors? Demetrius is protected by the internet guides. Huh. Uh, let me put him actually put you here. Come on. Well, I just gave me stupid errors. I don't know why. But, I mean, a 24 is going to hit you, I'm assuming, Demetrius. Uh, yes. Yeah. Alright. Demetrius is going to get another lightning scar. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and as you, uh, say hi, Pops, uh, Corbin, uh, another one comes hurling straight at you. advantage on that? For what? For being a gnome. <laughs> it, it's not a saving throw. Mm -hmm. It was like a straight bolt attack. Oh. I guess the rest of the party stays quiet. <laughs> and uh, after uh, yep. after these two lightning strikes happen, uh, the storms continue, but Sidon's face can no, be, uh, can no longer be seen in the clouds. So, so, two of our party has just gone down, big time. Yes. Uh, medic, can you do anything about that? Arcadia goes over. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, she is going. She has a medicine, healer's kit. Uh, I'm going to spend uh, something on each of them too, unless unless someone has some healing. Corbin's got a health potion on him. He searches his body. Um, does Nicodemus have any more um, spells? Yeah. Should we? Do we want to? Do we want to? I guess we should revive them because she can. We can do more than that. So should we just? Uh, do you want to use the health potion, the healing potions, then? I mean, if we're close to a rest period, it'd be better to heal and then rest. But yeah, I got. I got some healing. I could. I can get okay. Them. So, I mean, are we still in initiative order? No, it's out. Okay. It was basically to see who gets hit with, with the bolt. Um, how long, when did I, um, when did I disconnect in my recap? Uh, pretty much towards the end. About with the, uh, the, uh, the Cyclopses. Okay, what I had said was, we are at our three-week mark together as a party, and also if you add eight months to that, as players, we have been together playing this campaign for eight months and three weeks. Has it been that long already? Gosh. Oh, yeah. Yep. Session 27, yeah. We haven't played every week. Damn. <laughs> and, oh, uh, I, I told Arcadia this last week, but I'll tell you guys this too. Um... You have officially completed Act 1 and are now on Act 2. By the way. 
yes. Yay! Um, Yay. Also worth noting, I was looking at my character sheet, and my log and notes are empty. Yes, yes. Um, so that was what was throwing the errors last week. So I had to get rid of it. There's another one. I just haven't... Uh, my uh, PayPal got hacked, and I can't call them until Monday to get it fixed. Uh, but then next week we should have the journal tab up again. My log seems to be fine. Uh, the turn there was like another journal tab that you could uh, that had all your little different intricacies in it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Oh, that one, yeah. Okay. All right, but you guys, do we pick them back up? Yeah, yeah. So you, you get you get healed again. Well, I get up healthier than I was before, and uh, yeah, and fresh new scars, fresh new lightning scars. <laughs> and uh, I say, uh, I look at uh, Corbin and I say, first time. <laughs> <laughs> In this body. Uh. So, uh, Tarkon, the dragon rider, comes uh, rust running out of the gate, and he says, If you're done playing, come on, come on, we must get in. I say, Does it look like we were playing? He looks you up and down. Do you want me to answer that? I say, I uh, wish Sidon would have smitten you. <laughs> I paid my dues. Now the enter the city. Alright. Um. Uh, so he is pretty much going to uh, push you along straight to the palace. Um, essentially oh, saying... Extra slowly now. Oh, he says, uh, once um, uh, the king's dilemma has been resolved, you are free to wander and explore the palace and city. And as you're coming through the streets, even looking, uh, all the town folk, like there's almost no one out. And the ones who are out are kind of like running from the storm to get into shelter. Yeah, I know I'm going to the palace, but if this guy's like rushing me, I'm going to walk extra slowly just to beef with this dude. R walk extra slowly all you want. And uh, Fulon will come up to you and say, Do they all, do they all uh, talk to you like this? And he said, uh, at the start, yes, but uh, they quickly learned their lesson. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to kind of come through the gate, uh, through the city. Um, for the most part, there's really no one out here. Um, but as you kind of cross over this little bridge and start walking uh, this way, you see... Uh, like up over here that there are uh, and uh, uh, this might be delicate to some people I guess I should say this so if uh, it upsets you just let me know and we can fix something but yes uh, um, you see a bunch of minotaurs uh, hanging out or they're kind of like uh, chained up outside and uh, um there is a sale. Uh, they, they, there's a sign above them that says uh, "for sale," and these minotaurs look very malnourished and uh, uh, very um, beaten, if you will. I will uh, spit on the ground and I will uh, tell. Uh, glad to see that uh, your great king is being classy as always. And he can't hear because he's so far ahead. He's just walking away, okay. I'll uh, say that uh, in general then. Nicodemus walks up behind Beatrice and pats him with his hand and Yes, they are for sale here. It's been a long time since I've been here, but uh, I do remember. Yes, yeah. I re vaguely remember this city as well. Uh, I spent some time in the theater of the gods here. It's a shame, but that's how it is here. 
It's a different run city, different run land. Perhaps we could change things, perhaps not. I doubt it. As we're walking along, Nicodemus is pointing out certain things to everybody, sites, talking about them, different buildings, different areas. Okay. Go ahead, Arcadia. Arcadia looks visibly uncomfortable here. Yeah, like, it, it, coming in here, because um, I guess uh, Astoria was kind of the biggest place that you've ever been into, right? The biggest place in the only city. Yeah, so Astoria is maybe a quarter the size of the city. Yeah, it's it's freaking massive. Ziggy. Um, so as you come, kind of start coming through these uh, royal gates, uh, you see this two beautiful uh, design temples. Um, one to the right has uh, depictions of five different gods, uh, and, but it looks like it's um, there's some people in it. Like you can kind of see some people inside. Uh, but not too many. And as you kind of pass this temple, um, this has a depiction of uh, the Titan Sidon, and uh, this one is almost packed to capacity. Did we see a cracked and peeling mosaic of Kyra on that other temple? You did. So I'll make a rude bullshit. gesture at the Temple of Sidon. <laughs> and you hear a uh, crack of thunder when you do that. Oh shit. I quickly, <laughs> uh, uh, I quickly walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, coming in to the palace. Uh, so the centurions escort you through marble colonnades of the palace and into the royal hall where the king waits. Rain hammers loudly upon the palace roof, and as you enter the throne room, uh, another ear-splitting crack of thunder rolls across the sky. A, you see a middle-aged man with a powerful build sitting on a gilded throne opposite the entrance. On the step below him uh, are four others, uh, a beautiful, ageless woman of regal bearing, a soldier dressed in a Cerulean cloak, which uh, most of you would recognize as Gaius. Uh, you see a tiefling wearing a black robe and a finely dressed young woman. Uh, centurions stand at attention along the walls of the room. And this is what the uh, royally dressed woman looks like. Is that Kyra? No. But they look almost like twins. Oh. Yeah, when I saw the image, I actually had to do a double take of Kyra's because, like, God, it looks the same, but no. Do you have a picture of Kyra you could throw up there really fast? I do. Uh, Not in pickle right. form, of course. Okay. I pickle Kyra. They could be twins. Yes. Uh, so you kind of get the sense that this is Valis. Yeah, Kyra has, they have slightly different eye colors. Yes, they do. Okay, what is appropriate? Bowing, taking one knee? Uh, you will see Kyra kind of, um, just do like a little bow. Okay, I also do a little bow. Right. And Acastus was the king, right? Yes. And he's the last. He's the last remaining descendant of the dragon lords. Acadia and um, Kyra's sister Valus. I'm just putting it in the notes. Does Corbin remember anything about this guy or his, the people he's descended from? Uh, this is uh, Esther Archelander's last remaining descendant. Ah. 
So would you know anything about this guy? Absolutely not. Uh, but you would know the name. But um, we learned that he's uh, like what you just said, the descendant of Arcander. In uh, sorry, Arcadia, did you say there's the last living dragon lord? Sorry, I think I was wrong. He was, but he was the last living descendant of Astart, Archelander. But he is Wait. restarting the Dragon Lord. Sorry, but Queen Valis is his wife, and she is the goddess of wisdom. And we have been warned a bazillion times not to piss her off. <laughs> yes, DM insight. Don't piss her off. <laughs> I mean, Vulcan told us, Pythor told us, and Kyra told us, and. <laughs> I think maybe even Pasmina told us. So I think that's like big hint. So clearly you're saying we should piss her off. Yeah, I think you should. Demetrius, go tell her to go fuck herself. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Volker when you need him? Oh, wait, he's dead. <laughs> um. Yeah, just another reminder since Volker is. Speaking of Volker being dead, hey, Twitch audience, just a reminder we can't heal each other anymore we rely on you to save us if we're dying <laughs> meaning heal us with with the twitch points all right so uh so when he out come in uh uh tarkin comes up gets down on one knee and he says uh, presenting the heroes my lord and they all, all of a sudden, all these people, they're kind of in a heated discussion. And then they stop and look at all of you. And uh, the king will get up and welcome you to the city. Uh, and he introduces you to his companions. Um, he will first say, I am King of Cassus, of course. And then this is my wife, Thalys. Um... Then we have, over here, we have Kundras, the Tiefling, uh, Gaius, the Centurion, and the lovely Bella. And uh, when he says the lovely Bella, you can kind of see anger flash across Bella's eyes. And he says, you no. Put those names uh, in the chat? Yes. 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 And he asks, um, uh, uh, who is who? Uh, Amitrius will uh, introduce himself and he says, uh, I am uh, Amitrius, uh, the centaur. I am here uh, after your summons. I'm one of the uh, Oracle's chosen heroes. Nicodemus. Bows down. My king, I am Nicodemus, born and raised here in the city. And of Mitros, I was the dock master in the harbor for many years. Now I am one of the chosen heroes. And he, he gets up from his bow. And his eyes kind of glance over and looks at Arcadia up and down. And he says, and who might you be? She puts her fist on her chest and lowers her, uh, not bows her head uh, before looking back at him and saying, I am Arcadia of Themis. Ah, the runt of the litter, I guess. But no less beautiful. And then he looks at uh, Kamos, and uh, he kind of tilts his head and looks over at Gaius, and Gaius nods, and he says, Ah, oh, you must be Kamos. Uh, yes, I am Kamos. How can I be of service? Well, we must, uh, as you can see, I have summoned you to stop this storm. And but we are kind of at a, a conundrum here, and we would leave it to your <laughs> ample hands. 
And I will say, uh, I see, uh, uh, Great King, uh, why is it that you do not simply send out your uh, dragon riders to solve this uh, problem? Uh, they are not fully trained yet. We are. St they're still. Um, f they're still training. Corbin yeah. will give a little snort when you say dragon riders. And he, um, he kind of looks down at you, and he no almost as if he notices you for the first time. He says, uh, "Who might you be, little gnome?" I am Corbin, descendant of Corbin, the great dragon rider. And he looks at you, but he has no descendants. But I know, but we that, have that, I, that you that you know of, and I will uh, kind of uh, point to the helmet. And he says, "You got the helm, oh my." Goodness, you robbed the necropolis? Just reclaiming my possessions. But you are. Uh, for once so little, you have. Um, you must have some brass ones. <laughs> I'll nod. And uh, I have a. Uh, a question. Um, yeah. Is Gaius, is that uh, the Sidon's champion? The one we encountered before? Yes. Well, wasn't he Wasn't he like being sassy to us and such? Yes. I will walk up to Gaius and I will get a little bit uncomfortably close and say, so, Gaius. So, yeah? when you start to get close, the Centurions pull out their, like, pull their swords from the hilts, like not fully drawing them, and take one step forward. I'll say, uh, calm down, we are all friends here. Uh, just glad to see my good old friend Gaius again. <laughs> Did, and I will say to him, Did you enjoy the uh, the sacrifice with the basilisks? And uh, you can see him start to get kind of like bright red. Uh, but uh, he just kind of nods at you and gives you uh, uh, anger eyes, if you will. I'll say to him, uh, uh, Sidon uh, showed his gratitude to us for that little event just as we entered the city. I'm not sure if you have heard. Of course I've heard, but you are still alive, so he obviously did not hit you with his full power, little one. Oh, uh, I am so grateful for his mercy. As we so, all are. Say, where is your good friend Brygos? He's around. And and Acasus will say, but this is no time for this. We must figure out how to stop this. And uh, I will uh, back off. Now, we have uh, among us. We we've come up with some solutions, but all of our solutions we believe to be correct, and we can't settle on one. So we will leave it with you. And uh, Acasus will say, since you are the great and powerful uh, heroes of the Oracle, surely you have some kind of magic to be able to stop this storm. I have heard that there are powerful spells that can be used to alter the weather. And if the rumors about you are true, then you must be mighty enough to, uh, to command such magic. This typhoon, it is Sidon's work, no? It is. And I will point at Gaius and I'll say, is he not Sidon's champion? Can he not simply ask his god to uh, rid it of this typhoon? And he says, of course I could, but I demand, I think, that in order for Sidon to stop this, that we should dismantle the Temple of the Five and smash every stone to dust. And I will say, what do you think about that idea, King Acastus? Acastus kind of shrugs. And I will say, uh, I will, uh, you keep uh, an interesting uh, uh, court, uh, Fair King. Uh, I, I would think that uh, this man, Gaius, is the champion of the one that threatens your city. 
Yet you afford him a great deal of respect and protection. Interesting. Well, you might not know this, but the worship of Sidon is rampant in this city. Mm, and so, such gratitude he shows you. Of course. He has heard uh, that the heroes, he, the mighty heroes, uh, he, and Sidon is tired of the worship of the five and putting any faith in these puppets of the oracle. But the oracle is his daughter. And? He should trust her more. <laughs> it's not good to put the oracle in a corner. It is, uh, wow. it is a very interesting that your uh, city worships uh, the Sidon, and in return he uh, threatens to flood and drown it all. A very interesting... And, and in addition to that, I, I don't think this is a good plan, because uh, why, why risk angering the five and making different enemies? You should get a solution that uh, pleases all. And uh, so, Nico, you would know, since you lived here... Um, that there are people who worship pretty much everyone, like between uh, Sidon, Lutheria, uh, the gods, uh, Titans, this and that. It's like a big smorgasbord, if you will. I will say, uh, Great King, I will be honest with you. I speak for my party as well. We do not have any magic that can undo this typhoon. And he looks at you. <sighs> of course. Well, we've heard Gaius's option. Uh, what about Condrus? And Condrus says that Sidon can only be placated by the intervention of Lutheria, his sister wife. Uh, you should order 70 children of the city to take the black and dedicate themselves to the cult of Lutheria. She will treat them very well. You see Arcadia stiffen a little when she hears this. One option is uh, destroy the Temple of the Five. The second option is uh, placate, uh, what's her name, Lutheria, by taking 75 children and making them take the black and join her cult. And the third option was cast a powerful weather changing spell to rid this place of the typhoon. And uh, he will say, "Is this? Are these three all the options?" And then uh, he will turn and look at uh, Bella, and uh, she gets up and she kind of, as she walks over, uh, it's almost as if she's gliding. Um, Best description, uh, think of her as kind of like a waifu, if you will, uh, looks-wise. And uh, Valis glares at her. Uh, and she says, uh, with a very sweet voice, um, why hasn't the usual situation been tried? Normally, the priests of Sidon sacrifice dozens of animals. Um, why don't we do that? And then a castus will say, uh, to uh, placate, they would have to perform a hectatum, a sacrifice of 100 oxen, which would require the half the livestock in the city and would cost about 10,000 gold. Uh, and then castus looks at you, maybe you could pay the cost? We obviously cannot afford such an expense. I see, uh, I will look at uh, Gaius. Uh have you communed with your master any time uh, in the recent past? What would he think of such a sacrifice? Yeah, he might be happy with it. Do you know of anyone that can uh, speak to Sidon in any way? Of course. Is there something he wants? Well, who is it? I can always talk to him, of course. Uh... And uh, yes, and he has told you specifically that he wants the Temple of the Five destroyed. No, but that might help. Um, would you uh, do King Ar? Um, sorry, it's a lot of new names. Would you do King 
Acastus the honor of speaking to Sidon and uh, perhaps asking him if there is a uh, specific thing that he uh, desires. I could always ask him, but sometimes the great and powerful Sidon doesn't always uh, answer. Uh, is there I, a, I am just is there a, a peon. Ar- Arcadia, uh, again, she bows, fist on her chest, bows her head, looks at Queen Valis and says, Mighty Queen, you are the goddess of wisdom. What is your counsel? And suddenly she stands up from her throne and approaches you directly, uh, ignoring the protests of the king. Uh, She radiates radiates a sense of profound intellect and divine beauty. Uh, She says, here is a prophecy, hear me now. For centuries the people of Myrtros have revered me as goddess of wisdom. Mortal kings once traveled from across the Cerulean Gulf to seek my counsel. But as you can see, my husband prefers to consult with fools and whores. We gods are capable of saving the city. Joined together, the four of us can weave a spell to counter Sidon's magic. Such a miracle will require a sacrifice of our power. I can do what must be done to protect my city, but the others will need to be persuaded. I have summoned Pythor and Vulcan uh, to the palace, as you already have my sister here so that you could speak with them and make them see reason. You are the chosen's, the oracle's chosen. They would heed your words. Um, Arcadia bows her head and says, thank you. We have uh, received much um, information uh, today. Would you uh, allow us to uh, rest and uh, think over the, our course of action? And, and decide what must happen. Acastus, Acastus looks at you and, uh, and he kind of gestures around, of course! There's no torrential downpour happening. Take all the time that you need, great hero. And uh, Amitrius, he will laugh a little bit and uh, he says, uh, I understand uh, your hurry, uh, Great King. I do, but uh, all the things that can be done against this spell, they require uh, some planning and some work, and uh, we must figure out which uh, course of action is the most prudent. But uh, I assure you, we treat this most seriously, and uh, we will take, we will put uh, all the effort in with all haste that we can. All right. And uh, as you're saying this, um, Gaius has something to cast this. Oh, God, I want to help you understand that, too. <laughs> and uh, he looks at you and says, Fine. Take all the time that you need. He says, uh, do you have perhaps uh, some token of your uh, favor so that we may move about the city freely? You do not have my favor, so I cannot give you one. Well, then we will try our best without your favor. Well, good luck getting into any shops up there. Uh, uh, I'm sure you, you can see as you're walking through that most of the places are shut down due to the hurricane. Well, of course, I do not mean to. Um, um, How about a place to, you know, get cleaned up, have a meal, and at least chew this over? Yes, you don't want a wet, bleedy horse in your city. Uh, we have appropriate sized rooms. Uh, the centaur here may stay in their stables with the horses. The, uh, the more aid you give us, uh, the better we can do to help the city of Mitros. Well, if it's aid you want, I could give you some advice uh, and maybe uh, something to kind of light a fire under you. Yes. We hear that you are looking for the Ultros, yes? 
that is true. And he pulls uh, pulls something out of his pack and he says, or out of his uh, cloak and says, "I just so happen to have a map to the last known position of the Ultros. Fix this storm for us, and it is yours." What about the compass? That's I cannot help you with. At least Perhaps we. It's on the ship. Mm. Perhaps. But to so get that map would be extra special. <clears throat> so we should. It. Yes, definitely. Besides, this is this city was once very great, and we must protect it. If they don't even respect Armetrius enough to give him reasonable um, accommodations, I don't know if we should be reasonable with the city. I'll say I do not mind. I and, often find horses better company than humans. Okay, and to be fair, uh, he is a centaur. They don't exactly have centaur-sized rooms, I guess. Okay. So uh, I say we go... Uh, find a place to lodge in and then discuss our options. What time is it? It's... Mid we started the session kind of mid-afternoon. Yeah, mid-afternoon. And uh, I will say before I leave, uh, we will uh, think it over and we will take action as soon as possible. In the meantime, I can only... Uh, I can only advise that you rid your court of snakes and I look at uh, Gaius. Nah, he's okay. He does he speak. Be he responsible for this typhoon. He does speak for many people of the city, after all. Think. Uh, yes, the fools need representation. Do you know who? Do you know who Warm Tongue is? Yeah. Uh, I I, I kind of think of him as a uh, guy as Warm Tongue. <laughs> Like an advisor, but not an advisor, but an advisor. Yeah, he's a bit like that. All right. Well, uh, time to go to our rooms, I guess. Okay. Or maybe yeah. we want to go to a tavern and uh, discuss our plans. Yeah, let's hit the tavern first, I think. Yeah. If you can find one that's open. We should go someplace where we can't be heard either. The tavern sure is open. I'm sure there's drink. We can have a uh, private room in a tavern. Yeah. And if we are followed, we'll just do our usual thing of uh, attacking whoever follows us. <laughs> oh, okay. Got <laughs> us. Just in case. My, my home turf. Just in case we're being followed, I'll uh, I'll play the uh, Amazon song. <laughs> if you guys uh, click that note in that I just posted in the chat, you'll see everything that was just discussed. Nice. Thank you. Uh, when Corbin starts to play the Amazon song, uh, Arcadia goes up to him and says, please stop. Hmm. But, but why? I thought that was a song to signal our friends. I just don't want to hear it right now. Oh. Okay. And I'll say you can play the, the, the song of the Mighty Centaurs. What does that song sound like? Do I know this song? I don't know. I just made it up, but uh, I'm sure there is a song like that. But you would probably not know it, since it would probably be played among the centaurs, not the humans. See, uh, see if I re see if I remember any uh, songs of the centaurs. Um, Arcadia would go over to Nicodemus and say. Where do you recommend we go? This is your city. Well, if you're open, down near the docks, there's a tavern. Sounds sounds like you should lead. You also notice oh, yeah. Corbin is, is is eyeing Nicodemus very very strangely. Uh, he's he's kind of he wants to ask him something, but he's 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 waiting a little bit. In the meantime, did I do I know any centaur songs? Um, sure. 
I guess okay. uh, an old ones. Right. And I'll, I'll try to play an old one. <sighs> I do not I'm play sound, very well. Doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> It all... like, uh, this is not like I remember it from my childhood. <laughs> and I'll say, stop, stop playing that. M meanwhile, Corbin just continues on. I like the whip. I like the nay nay. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. I say, Corbin, <laughs> I, one day I will stuff you into, the, into this drum and I will let the entire town bonk on you. Uh, perhaps, uh, my friend. Back in an hour. All right. Dinner time. Let's just hear the satyr's tale. Is that a that a tavern that we could go to? So all this. Um, let me kind of draw, draw, draw in here really quick. Ooh. Big ass fireball. Um, so <laughs> this is pretty much everything that you've been like the streets and stuff that you passed uh yeah. everything was shut down okay um and that's kind of like the uh like the agora and like the richie area um you could always try the docks like where the blue collar workers are because i'm sure the you know people got to get drunk still yep there's always people getting drunk during a hurricane Let's visit uh, the greasy uh, bar that Nicodemus used to visit as his time as Duckmaster. Okay. Uh, so we would get, uh, let's say, about here. Um, the rain is, uh, as soon as y'all step out, you're going to get, like, soaked to the bone, essentially. Um, and as we're coming down, there are a few people on the streets rushing a boot. Um, and everyone give me a uh, perception with a disadvantage because of the rain. I swear to God we're being followed again, guys. At this point, I don't need a check, because I already know. No one noticed anything. Ah. So we keep coming down, keep coming down, we come over here, we come down here, we come down to here, people are still, a lot of things are closed down. Uh, give me another perception check, please. Disadvantage still? See. I will say this to the party, that guy is just a snake. He truly pisses me off, I want to beat his pretty face in. I'll just say that out loud on the street. No shame. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, somebody here overhears you saying that as they're rushing by. And says, he's a great, he's a great, powerful person. Leave him alone as they keep running by. Um, but Arcadia, you get the sense that there is somebody kind of following you but keeping their distance uh you've seen i guess the same black cloak kind of uh etching around the streets as as y'all keep going she tells the party we're being followed and uh, i'll say uh i'll lower my voice and I'll say let's do the good old uh, alley turn we'll turn around the corner we'll wait and then we'll ambush I ready myself to turn into the alley. <laughs> uh, do you want to make a keep going straight or make a uh, make a right? Uh, make a right. Okay. Down here. All right. So I'd say maybe five minutes have passed, um, and as the time passes, you see people continue uh, just a few people on the streets right now uh, but you do not see uh, uh, that figure Arcadia and I tell the party that 
I think that whoever was following us is on to us. I don't see them. But they're wearing black. Cloak, I know that's not very helpful. Well, let's find a, a nice tavern with a private room for us to discuss things. Okay. Uh, so, as you start to come here, um, who would kind of be in the back, like, uh, marching-wise? Arcadia usually likes to be in the back. Probably Nico would kind of be up front because of him knowing the city a little bit better. All right. Uh, Urban would be w we went near Nico. Arcadia, roll a percentile. So, you, uh, uh, you feel a hand kind of grab you by the shoulder. Okay, her natural reaction is to whatever shoulder is being grabbed, to lift her arm up and grab that arm. And loop her arm underneath it to um, hyperextend the elbow. So when you try to do that, uh, the person who grabbed you... Uh, gets out of it really quick and kind of put like gets you kind of in a not a chokehold but like get both their arms behind you with your like arms kind of extended if that makes sense and um, a female voice says fear not I do not come I uh, fear not I come in peace Okay, she relaxes a little bit. Well, not really, but she doesn't do anything. And she, but she does. Uh, Arcadia doesn't fight that then, but she's still on alert. And, and she lets you go, and it is uh, that person in the black hood, and uh, um, she kind of pulls it back a little bit, and you can tell that she is an Amazon. Oh, well then I put my fist on my chest and bow uh, my head and say sister. She does the same. And she uh, tells you that her name is Makhara um, and that she is the Queen's Steve Stewardess. Stewardess. And and uh, that's the queen wishes to have an audience with her, with with the party, um, after they have stopped this storm. And she says, "Very well, we will be there." And then she puts her fist to her chest, bows, and disappears. Um, would you please put her name in the chat? Yes. Oops. I guess that would help if people could understand it. Thank you. Um... No, since this happened probably in less than 30 seconds, I'm not sure others would uh, have noticed it. Uh, but if you want to tell them, you can. Um, I'll tell them later. We still need to get to the tavern. It's raining. Yeah. Uh, so now that you're kind of getting into uh, the dock area, like um, this is where all the, the fruit work goes on for the most part. <coughs> uh, most places are closed up and boarded up, but there is one place that is uh, lively and rowdy. <laughs> and it, uh, of course, it is a bar. Of course. Corbin says, See, I told you. Bars are always open during hurricanes. <laughs> Do we go in? 
Absolutely. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, who goes on first? Uh, uh, Corbin will follow Nico in since it, he knows Nico. the place. All right. So, uh, this place is lively. There's piano music going on and all that jazz. Uh, as soon as you walk in, um, everything kind of stops and like, everybody turns and stares at you. And uh, the bartender, you hear somebody yell out the bartender, Nicodemus the murderer. And that's where we'll take a break. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> oh. There's going to be a fight, guys. There is going to be a fight. <laughs> Odd nickname, yeah. Nickname. You just pissed off a saltwater dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <All right>. boy. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we'll come back, uh, let's take a 10 minute, and then we'll come back and have, uh, some more fun. Thank you, 10. Alright, stream will be back in, uh, 10 minutes. If you go ahead, please come back, uh, because we have some more fun to get into. See you shortly.
pam. Uh, Baha, hell yeah, I think. Check, who do that? I am ready. Yes. Just waiting for a dear old person. Urzum's on another continent. <laughs> Urzum, or not, not Urzum, Nico. Oh, because his, his uh, PC, or his name that he logged in is Bursum. <laughs> or is Bursum on another continent? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Alright, so yeah, as you come in, uh, everything stops. And uh, you hear Nicodemus the murderer. And um, uh, coming out from uh, behind the bar is a uh, short, stout dwarf, long red beard, uh, and you reckon you, you reckon yeah, you recognize him as uh, his name is Treebeard, and he looks at you and gives you a glare. Who beard? Treebeard. Oh, Treebeard. Happy Treebeard. Treebeard. I might have known. You take that back right now. <laughs> he glares at you. Or what, old man? Well, you'll discover what an old man will do to you if you don't. And he he looks at you, and you, you see that he starts to grin a little bit, <laughs> and then laughs and says. Drinks, 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 and he comes up and uh, goes to give you a hug. I thought you were against me. <laughs> you could have, you fooled me, didn't you? <laughs> You're just a murderer of fish, of course. No, fish, of course. <laughs> and mermaids. Come here. He gives him a big hug. All right. He's like, what did you think I was talking about? Damn <laughs> <laughs> you and Gorgio. <laughs> and he says, it's been too long, my friend. Where have you been? And you have new companions and a fine looking centaur. Yes, I've been away training and now I'm one of the chosen heroes. Of the Oracle. You're that, Nicodemus? Whoa. One and the same. Oh, so this must be the great and powerful Arcadia and and the mighty Corbin and Kamos the Wise and Ametrius. Who Ametrius? I'll say, uh, don't get any ideas, my dwarven friend. Uh, of course not, of course not, my lord. I would never. But drinks for all. Drinks for all. Odin will pound the first drink in front of him. And uh, give me a concept, because it is super strong. <laughs> or an ale. Nice. You keep it down, and as you drink it, Treebeard says, Ah, do you not pour any out for the, the lady? I'll, uh, I'll spit a little bit out as I'm swallowing it. And he nods approval. Oh, what brings you down to this lovely place? We got dragged halfway across the continent to see the king, to get an impossible task. And now we have to figure out, what are we going to do? And, and so... Okay. And then we heard from Nicodemus that this would be a, a great place to, you know, cool our heels for a little bit. 
and you hear someone in the back uh, yell, Fuck the king! And Amicia will uh, laugh at that. <laughs> Arcadia turns around and looks to see who says that. Is it somebody? Uh, you are not able to see them. And But you do hear the voice say, Fuck the king again. Uh, and I'll uh, ask uh, our dwarven friend, is this a common occurrence? Is he not well loved here? Well, some there's some who love him, some who don't. They, you know, eh, it's a big city, you can't please everyone. Just like there are some who like this, as he gestures to the rain. And there are some who pray to the lady to stop it, and others who still worship the five. Could you believe that the king wants us to figure out how to stop the ring? He, he looks up at you and he's like, well, you are the Oracle's champion, Jess. Yes, Arcadia frowns and looks at Camos. Like, yeah. We are. Barbin will play a few bars of who will stop the rain. <laughs> and as, as the first couple notes go out, uh, he holds up his hands to his ears and he says, I like the enthusiasm, my gnome friend, but please, please, no. If, if you want, there's a piano over there you can play. Yeah, no. Bagpipes are the only Ar true instrument. Arcadia looks at the tree beard and says, uh, is there a private room we could go into? Uh, he, he kind of blushes he says I, I thank you my lady for the offer but I am happily married <laughs> <laughs> she says no a meeting room and she looks visibly uh, well she blushes a little bit he's like oh 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 yes yes of, of course Nicodemus gives him an elbow well played my friend <laughs> ah, you know the way she'd kill me <laughs> Barbara will walk towards the room and say, Let's go, killer. We have lots to discuss. <laughs> you want me to come? Okay, okay. Um, and he, he uh, as he's walking back with you, he shouts out, Ajax, take over. And uh, this massive mountain of a man with one ice uh, steps up and goes to the bar. And, he's, uh, and Trevor says, I know, I know. But he, he help is uh, it's hard to get good help around here sometimes, and he's he's a big boy. He might be a little dumb, but he's a big boy. I say, what happened to his eye? Uh, he won't talk about it much, but he supposedly he got poked out by a uh, a winged demon, is what he says. A demon, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said too. I don't really believe it, but you know, whatever. He's loyal and he does his job. Right, but uh, yeah, they'll lead you into the back. Uh, the five views. I uh, didn't forget to mention that Kyra and Falan did stay up with uh, Acastus. And I will uh, ask him uh, have, do you have uh, any food? I haven't eaten. Food, of course we have food. Uh, do you want another drink, my friend? Uh, I'll, I'll pass on the drink, but uh, I'll take as much. Uh, I'll take a, a boar if you have it. I'll take his drink. Then he looks. Uh, when you say pass on drink, he looks at Nico. And he, uh, you have. Uh, he's not drinking. What? what? Okay. He can drink if he can find his tankard, but he has taken an oath. And I'll say, I'll, I'll thank you not to uh, share my business with uh, everyone that asks, Nicodemus. Corbin will, will whisper in his ear, it's okay, he's a draft horse. Ha! <laughs> he laughs. Very well, uh, uh, if you want water, there's a trough outside, but other than that, we serve whiskey and ale. Uh, food, um, don't have a boar, but we can get you some meat, of course. Thank you. 
Uh, is uh, Kyra here as well? She is not. No. She and Full on are at the palace. Correct. They stayed there. And uh, Arcadia would have passed her drink to uh, Nicodemus. Oh, he'll take it. Yeah, I figured he would. <laughs> now, you know, it, it's like this was back in a time when water just generally wasn't clean, you know, it was like you had to have alcohol in uh, your, you know, so what you're drinking just to kill the germs. <laughs> Pretty and that's much. usually called, like, a table wine or a table beer. Do they yes, have this something... Is, this is stronger, though, because I had to do a constitution check. Right! I, I'm like... I, I can flat out say, hey, do you have anything weaker, but do you have a table beer? And he says, of course we do. Let me, how much do you want? Do you want big or little? I guess I'll go with a big. All right, all right. Uh, everyone want food? Meat is okay, yes? Very well. Yes, yes. Uh, he'll pull uh, Nico to the side, and um, uh, I'm going to whisper this to you. No, you speak Dwarven, right? You have Dwarven as your language, yes? Good. <laughs> One would think. The dwarf oh. doesn't speak dwarf. <laughs> no, I'm just making sure he has it in his languages as well. <laughs> uh, let me quickly mark these off. Sorry about the spam. Uh, he will say that to Nico as uh, he walks out. Uh, what did he say? Do you ask that to him? Nico? Yeah. He told me don't. What? I don't know. Perhaps drink? Perhaps eat? Uh, scroll down. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that when okay. I said... Okay, I, I, I didn't see that. Yeah, the don't was my test. <laughs> to see okay. if you could actually understand it. Yeah, I, I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ah! So Nico whispers over to Emetrius. He's like, Try eating vegetables today. As opposed to meat? Mm. <laughs> are, you, are you saying this dwarf is serving us poison? No. No. It's something you wouldn't want to eat. What are you talking about? Well, it's this just something. Didn't go to the glue factory? <laughs> are the rest of us hearing this, or this is just Nicodemus? I will roll an intelligence check to see if I understand what he means, because I do out of character. <laughs> Let's see, I'll say DC 10. <laughs> and uh, Amisha's eyes go wide, and he gets up and he begins uh, stomping downstairs. <laughs> Corbin will try and hold him back. Whoa, whoa, Amitrius. We need to be careful in this city. Uh, Amitrius, uh, he's just going. Uh, I mean, Corbin can try to hold him back, but uh, he will just drag himself with him. I think that uh, was a bad choice of words. But... <laughs> Arcadia asked Nicodemus, what did you say to him? Because this was a whispered conversation between the two of them, right? Amitrius. Sure. The meat is horse. I will go downstairs and I will bust into the kitchen. And you see, uh, you see Treebeard. Uh, he's making up, you know, the drinks. He has the plates all spread out. Uh, he's. It, it looks kind of like not a five-star restaurant, but like the presentation looks very well presented, uh, plate-wise. I will draw my weapon and say, "How dare you serve centaur here, you barbarian!" He looks. So is up. it centaur? Or is it horse? No, it's horse. Yeah, but I'm so been, uh, you did, you Nico's, didn't say Nico's it. following him. He's like, no, wait, no. He looks up with fear in his eyes and said, no, my lord, it's just horse. 
I, I, I told Nico that you might not want to eat it because um, you, it's like, I, I don't know the correct terminology, but you are part horse. Uh, I didn't know how you would feel about that. That's why I, I will, told uh, him. I will shed my halberd and I will uh, walk up to him and I say, uh, I, I, pro I apologize profusely, uh, Master Dwarf. It was a misunderstanding. Uh, I hope you can uh, forgive my rage. Of course, of course. I would never actually feed... Uh, uh, I would never think about feeding uh, center meat here. Okay, uh, uh, sorry for the misunderstanding. And I, uh, I walk back to uh, Nicodemus, and uh, Amicius's face is red, and he leans over and says, "What the hell? Why do you think I would have a problem with horse? Just say it was horse next time." Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know what you feel bad about certain feelings about horse. I mean, it's a little strange, but it's not. It's still an animal. Yes, but. <laughs> But, you know, you being part horse. I almost killed that man, you know. I know, you have a temper. You need to calm down sometimes. Uh, I just misunderstood you and I will go upstairs and uh, oh. I just got images of those uh, troglodytes roasting those sunflowers <laughs> in my head. <laughs> and I will sit in the room and I will, uh, I will, uh, and I will look a little embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> as right. soon as everybody gets back into the room, Arcady would say, look, it's it's clear we don't have a... We should listen to Queen Valus. She is, after all, the goddess of wisdom. I mean, we cannot sacrifice a hundred oxen. We are certainly not going to enslave children. will clear his throat at that and, and say, well, let's just wait a minute. Uh, I have a question for uh, Nicodemus. So, Nicodemus, how many times can you turn yourself into an ox per day? I'll say and that's not going to be a plan. Uh, and they have to sacrifice them. But we can revive him. Uh, wow. Look, we just have to talk. We have to just talk to Vulcan and Pythor and Kyra and convince them to help Queen Valis. We have relationships with all three of them. Yes, it's yes. That's, than... that, is, that is probably true, I guess. It is not I, that I easy, though, because... Uh, Queen Vela said that they would have to sacrifice a portion of their power, and I think that is permanent. I am confident that uh, Pythor will readily do that. Woo -woo. He is Even, very heroic. Thank you for that follow. Even the other choices, I don't Crumb, see. Uh, crumble. Yes, it's <laughs> difficult, but I don't see how. Uh, I just wonder. The, other... the the five did they not defeat Sidon or at least force him into a pact? I mean, how the is pact it that Sidon? Is ending now. Sidon can cast the spells now. so powerful that they would need to sacrifice a portion of their power just to undo a single spell. Now that is because what happened originally. He has been around a lot longer than they and he's very powerful. I'm starting to see why uh, my people follow him so readily. He is, uh, he is truly a god worthy of, uh, of the name. Maybe we should, uh, before we jump to conclusions, I would like to to find out if there's not a hidden way that is uh, a little bit cleaner. Because if we sacrifice the gods now, that might come back to bite us when we need them. Uh, we're not going to sacrifice them, we just... Well, a portion of their power. No, I, I I think we should listen to the God of the wisdom here. We, we can talk to them and find out exactly what that means. And also, um, I was stopped by... A messenger from Queen Ballas who told me that after we are able to stop the storms, she would like a private audience with us. Hmm. Right. So, no. yes, I, I suppose if Nicodemus isn't willing to sacrifice him over and over again, then this is probably the only way. <laughs> that, oh my god. I just think there's something that we are not seeing. Yeah, it's like we're definitely working with imperfect information here. Now, it, it, it's... Help me out. What choice are we going with here? Or what uh, is the... well, we're either going to talk to the, the five gods and have them sacrifice a portion of their power uh, to uh, stop the storm, 
or, we're going to, or, or we're going to sacrifice Nicodemus over and over again and have Demetrius heal him with Lay on Hand. You can uh, click oh. that uh, link, Kamas, uh, and you can see the options. Yeah, or we can have 70 children uh, devote themselves to the cult of... Uh, yeah. No, but I, I rejected I rejected the other ones. We're, we're definitely not doing the other ones. Well, no, but Thomas wanted to know their options, and I'm just saying yes. all of them. Yeah, yeah, sacrifice the children or or destroy the Temple of the Five Gods. I'll say, um, well, there's also, uh, yeah, destroying the temple. Do they really need a temple? Yes, yes, they do. Actually, that is... Uh, Actually, I just noticed he they summoned Kyra, Pythor, and Vulcan, and together with uh, Queen right. Valus, that is only four gods. Right, because Mitro sacrificed herself. Um, she's the goddess of dawn, so yeah, that's she did. Yes, yeah, she, she did that already. She's not dead, but sorta. But I'll put that in my. Uh, she, the list she's of she's not really dead, but she's not. She can't walk around with uh, and interact with people anymore. So basically, we're doing the same thing that she did a long time ago, only at a so smaller level. We have met all all of the gods that can still roam this uh, plane. And uh, it, it's just like uh, when it comes to casting a powerful weather changing spell. Is there maybe we can investigate and see, you know, it, what goes into that idea? Because why do they even think that's possible? Do I think I just wave my hands and make it happen? Or is there more to it? Well, it seems to be a complicated ritual that uh, needs them to sacrifice uh, a sacrifice of their power. Yeah. Oh, that's the okay. That's what goes into that choice. Gotcha. Yeah. We might have to uh, gather regions or protect them from uh, Sidon's minions. Wait, no. It's like, oh yeah, destroy the temple or uh, powerful weathers. Gotcha. Got it. And just everybody noticed the note in text in chat from Mangorgio. Yeah, I can't read it. It says, keep in mind the five gods signed the pact. Valis said the four gods. So, Mitros might be involved somehow uh -huh. in a non-corporeal form. So, what do we all think? Are we going with the... Uh... I think we should trust the. We should talk to the gods about sacrificing their power. All right. I guess it will be some time before they come to the city. Well, we can go to their temple. Well, yeah. She said they were summoned to the temple, right? Did she say when? Uh, she sent out the summons before you got there. So, knowing how fast gods could probably travel, maybe a day. Okay. Well, we can get. Keep drinking and get some rest. I'm sure that friendly bartender Ajax will help us. Well, um, Arcadia will just eat, but she's not going to drink, and she's going to, if she's in that room, she's going to take out some tools and mix and begin repairing her. Poor mix. Yeah, well, uh, well, I guess we can shop since everything is closed, so, uh, long rest? Okay. Um, can you tell me how much time before the long rest that Arcadia would be able to work on next? Um, to however much however much time you want, because if you're uh, it's middle, it would say probably be early evening now with this encounter. Um, so if you just want to wait a few hours, or you can always sleep in. Yeah, she would like to. She would like to work on her the entire eight hours if possible. Okay. Uh, so it would. Technically, need sixteen hours because you need eight hours. Well, no, because you can get yeah, you take a little nap. That's fine. Ideally, I want to get up early in the morning to go to the temple. Okay. And when you wake up, uh, Nyx is complete. So I don't, I don't think you really, I don't think you need to do any kind of checks right for that. No, it just takes me eight hours to repair her. All right. Yeah, so Nyx is uh, uh, complete. Um, the storm is coming down a little bit heavier. Uh, 
but yeah, it's early morning. Um, I guess we get up and see if uh, Pythor and Vulcan are there. Yeah. Barbin orders uh, another strong beer before we leave for breakfast. And he says, well, do you want that or do you want this thing that we call Bleeding Mary? No, no, no. That, that, sounds, is, that, is, that, that is gross. A I, gross. <laughs> I, I, I would have the strong beer, and uh, sometimes I have seen people put noodles in it. Yes, uh, Bleeding Mary would put uh, these stalks, and we put. Uh, some people like to put Steve's barbecue sauce in there. Uh, we have a little bit of pecan. <laughs> Nico will take it. Nico will take a Bleeding Mary. I oh, haven't had one of these in many, many years. <laughs> Head of the dog. <laughs> like a drink that comes with a salad, sure. Barbara will make a face and say, "Oh, when I first came here, I, I floated ashore, and all I had to eat was that Steve's barbecue sauce. I, I cannot stand it anymore." Do you know where it came from? Because we're running out, and we can't find the recipe. Uh, uh they just came from... upon a large crate in uh, Astoria. Yep. Oh, the story of the little shithole town. Yes. yes. Oh. I mean, oh. <laughs> wouldn't call it a shithole, but I'd call it quaint. <laughs> nah, it's little. It is little, but it, it's a clean little city, and I've grown accustomed to it since I've been there. Ah, but here's... this is me hometown. I hear the uh, the king's daughter uh, likes to um, uh, get around a little bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I will give him an unamused look. <laughs> oh, I'm just having fun. Just don't take everything so seriously. And I'll say, uh, I'll try uh, some of the water outside. I'll go outside and I'll drink from the unclean, diseased water. Oh, luckily you are immune to disease. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, ah, this tastes nice and fresh. Thank you, Sidon, for this uh, treat. And I will uh, wave my hand at the sky. Um, and it pours. Uh, the, the trough almost magically fills back up. So the rain is... The rainwater is diseased. Well, he was drinking out of the trough. Oh, okay. I was gonna say he could drink out of the rain bucket. Ma, the bucket. All right. So heading back up to the uh, temple. Let's see. Here. Again, everything is uh, pretty much closed. Uh, people are. Not out at all this early in the morning. And I'll say uh, they're sure eager to call the Astorians uh, a little shithole, but uh, at least they are not uh, coward for a little bit of rain. Keep in mind, this is like hurricane. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just trolling a little. Nice. <laughs> All right, so we come back to uh, the temple. Um, there's no real fanfare, but there are some uh, guards outside uh, the temple itself. I guess we walk up to them and we say, uh, "Hail, we are here to uh, to enter the temple." And uh, you do see uh, our old friend Sean as a guard. <laughs> Sean. And he, 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 yeah, as he sees you guys, his eyes get uh, really wide and he looks, he starts looking around almost as if he's, as if he's having PTSD. I will uh, pull Billy from my pouch and. Uh... He cries out. Hello, hello, my, my lords. And, uh, John. Say, uh, okay, you go. What are you doing here, John? 
um, King Pythor, uh, let me, um, he, he, he freed me and Vulcan took me under his wing and is letting me be one of his guards. Uh, and he's still looking around for, uh, for, for, for Steve. And he's like, is, is Lord, uh, Lord Steve here? No, he has, he has left us for now, but, uh. But he specifically asked me to uh, let him know where you are, so be nice to us, or I will have to keep that promise. Yes, my lord. And I'll say, I'll say, come on, Corbin. And I'll tell him, uh, we, we actually vouched for you with uh, King Pythor, so uh, you're a good friend. Thank you, lord. And uh, we made sure that your wife and your child are safe. They have a good job. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, please enter, though. Uh, the uh, all four of the gods are inside. And I will tell uh, Corbin you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And you hear Arcadia kind of stand her breath, yeah. like, you should take your own advice. <laughs> yeah. Cor Corbin looks very surprised at this kind for me, too. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I said, oh, well, very well, and uh, b before I leave, I will put, uh, I will whisper to Billy, and I will say, uh, Billy, follow this one around, and uh, make your presence known to him every once in a while, just to remind him, but do not get too close to him. And that is Billy's response. <laughs> <laughs> then I will release Billy and follow Demetrius. Okay. All right, coming into the temple... Uh, you do see uh, Pythor, Kyra, Vulcan, and Valus all inside. They're all sitting on chairs. Uh, Pythor, um, he looks a little ragged. And he is holding a drink in hand. Uh-oh. Arcadia notices this right away. And, and she, asks him, she asks him, what is the matter? Uh... My daughter is to be wed, and I don't know if I'm ready to accept that or not. You can always kill her husband. No, he's, he's uh, he, he, uh, I, I couldn't do that. He's not a bad man, he's just, I'm not ready to say goodbye to my little girl yet. Well, I'm sure that uh, Arcadia here can fill the void. <laughs> Why could she fill the void of my daughter? Oh, wait! Duh! She is my daughter. Hi, little daughter. She She's just been going at on him. about how she misses hugging her daddy. Just shut up, Demetrius. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, okay, and he gets up, and uh, as he tries to stand, he falls. Corbin will try and catch him. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna crush you. Give, give, it, give us a deck save. Yeah, he crushes you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as he's laying on top of you, he looks at you and. Huh? And uh, I, I will tell him I guess uh, some people really cannot resist uh, a divine lay. He says, please don't tell the Oracle. I don't want to face her wrath. But, uh, Kyra uh, says, come on. Get up in your chair. And Valis looks at him and shakes her head. Pathetic. And, uh, uh, Vulcan will say, all right, you know, for this crap, why are we here? Um, Pardon uh, will say, oh, go ahead. Uh, well, Amitrius will step up and he'll say, uh, as you can see, the uh, city of Mitros is in uh, trouble. Sidon himself appeared over the sky and he cast uh, a mighty uh, typhoon to drown this city. And uh, we spoke to the goddess of wisdom, uh, Valus, and I will motion towards her. And she said there is a ritual that uh, the gods can perform to... Uh, Undo this uh, magic. Yeah, we could, but why would we? Well, uh, will say, uh, surely one as heroic as you, Pythor, 
would not uh, would not hesitate to sacrifice some of his power to save the peoples, just as in the days of old. But what would be the reason of me sacrificing some of my power to help this hellhole of a city? Because uh, much of the trade from this city keeps uh, Astoria wealthy as well, and uh, I should think that uh, many of the people here are turning to Sidon, but if we show them the great ritual that you perform and that you are saving the city, then I'm sure that we could convince the population to turn towards your worship instead. But they Arcadia, have... Go ahead. Arcadia would speak up and say also this is not just for the city of Mitros. I believe this is part of our fight against the the end of the Orphic Peace. I believe this would affect, has larger ranging effects than just Mitros. But if we are to anytime sac... We can, good. Anytime we can weaken Saigon, Saigon the better. But if we are to weaken ourselves in the fight to come, if it so happens, we will be too weak to defend. Well, uh, I think that when uh, Sidon casts such a spell upon this city, he must have also sacrificed a portion of his power. And uh, I assume that uh, he is not uh, that much more mighty than all of you. Corbin will also whisper in his ear and say, Besides me, Lord, this, this storm could jeopardize the supply of cheesy potatoes. <laughs> ah, rain is good weather for potatoes. No, they get all rotten. <laughs> uh, I will turn towards uh, Vulcan and I'll say, what have you to say, God of Forges? And he says, I am leaning on the fence. Half of me says, okay, the other part... Well, the other part of me hesitates. The city, ha the city has gone to the dumps. I mean, they have, they still have a slave trade, for God's sakes. And uh, would you uh, be agreeable that if uh, King... Sorry, I need to look up his name again. What was his name again? Uh, King uh, Acastus, Acastus. Acastus, if he did some concessions towards you, would you be willing to help? What do you mean by concessions? Uh, well, for now, it seems that you find slave trade disgusting. If he is willing to concede that uh, slave trade is banished, would you be willing to perform the ritual? You want to try to convince an Archelander, and uh, when, he, when he says Archelander, he kind of spits on the ground, to get rid of the slave trade? Uh, yes. That is like half of their revenue. Of course, but uh, would you be willing? If we if, somehow could. If you could somehow convince him to do away with the slave trade, I would willingly give up some of my power. Very well. And I will turn to us, Kyra, and I will say, Kyra, uh, how are you feeling about this ritual? Um. Hmm. Okay, whatever. And I'll say to Queen Valus, have you any words for Pythor? She looks at him. And I'll say kind, inspiring words, perhaps. And she said, when, she, when you say that, he, she kind of smiles. And What's that phrase? Sometimes the best response is no response. All right. Well, I guess... Uh, if we manage to convince the king, we have Valus, Kyra, and Vulcan on our side, and all that we need is uh, Pythor. Corb will Corbin do. will approach Pythor and say, My lord, what can we do to persuade you? You are mm. so mighty. We, ha we cannot do this without you. Mm. What do you have on offer? I don't need anything. Well, we have already helped you with your daughter situation. Surely there must be something else you desire. Besides, you are so mighty and generous. I, I know you want to do this. And Amitrius walks up to Arcadia and gently nudges her and whispers, You are his daughter too. 
perhaps you can uh, put some of your daughterly charms to convince your father. She sighs and she says, I don't usually have any charming aspects. <laughs> and I will say, remember, when I uh, went down on my knees before that, and uh, he almost says bitch, but doesn't quite, before that b creature salamander. And uh, he will say, perhaps it is time for you to take a little inspiration from that moment. She closes her eyes and takes a deep breath and approaches Pythor and says, Father, I believe this is for the greater good. Would you consider joining us? Roll persuasion. Great. DC is 16. Oh. So you want it in the open then, huh? Yeah. Uh, inspiration? I think, yeah, yes, I was just going to say that. Yeah, we, you haven't used it yet. <laughs> nope, I'm using this, baby. <laughs> okay, guys, let's see. Uh, persuasion, here we go. Inspire. Oh, no. no. Yeah, Minus one, oh my god. Yeah, that kind <laughs> of fits with you. the way she asked him. And he looks at her and he says, No. Uh, uh, Arcadia, you should have put your back in it. Should have called him daddy. How Carl about... Carl I says, uh, maybe, maybe I can try to persuade him. And uh, I will look at him very skeptically. Say, okay, go for it. Corbin has done nothing but support Pythor. True, but uh, Pythor seems not very responsive to him. Corbin will uh, will use his inspiration and, and try to uh, plea on uh, Arcadia's behalf as well. And plea how? <laughs> oh, shit, the natural 20. <laughs> plea how, what do you say to plea? Uh, well, I'll kind of push her out of the way, and I go, "My lord, uh, she does not. She is an Amazon. She does not speak correctly." And I will bat my eyes at him like a like a little girl begging his her daddy for a treat, and say, "Oh, please, Papa Pythor, please, Papa Pythor, do do yes, this for increasing us." Increasing the DC. <laughs> and, you are just increasing the DC. But oh. Pythor looks at Kyra and he says, "You travel with people like that." He says, I wish I'm tired I'm tired of being a drunk. I want to I wish to be sober. You can make me sober but still give me the beautiful taste of booze then I suppose I can help. Arvin will give a glance to uh, Ametrius and say Ametrius? Think we're all my favorite tanger. <laughs> I'll say, all right, all right. And he walks over and he gives his uh, favorite tankard to uh, Pythor and he says, uh, uh, when you drink this from this tankard, you will never be drunk, no matter how much booze you drink. And he will give his favorite tankard. So he'll take the tankard and uh, try to drink out of it and nothing comes out. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you'll uh, still have to do, put booze in it, but it won't make you drunk. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and he he tries to drink from it. <laughs> doesn't work. Well, I mean, that's kind of logical if you think about it. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, he will, uh, he'll pour some, he'll get some of that, uh, that hot, uh, steamy black liquid and, uh, pour some in there and then take, like, a little flask and pour some of that in top and, and, uh, he'll swirl it around and drink out of it and, oh... You have my help. Very well, then I suppose Bye. we will go and speak to the king about uh, the slavery. Okay. Uh, we will be back uh, shortly, uh, uh, gods. Uh, per but before we go, I have a question. Are there not five 
gods. Why are there only uh, four here? They look around. The other is preoccupied. Mm, is she still uh, in this realm? She is everywhere, of course. Uh, is there uh, is there some way we can commune with her? Is there some way she can assist with your spell? No. All right. Very well. Thank you for uh, answering my question. Perhaps Nico could help with that if he if, if you're speaking of Thalia. No, we're speaking of uh, Mithros, the goddess of dawn. Ah. Okay. Mithros, the, the name the, the city is named after her. Okay. She sacrificed herself before. I yes. uh, All right. Arcadia pulls uh, Amitrius aside and says, Do you remember what... You understood what Gaius said to King Acastus. Uh What did Gaius say to him? In you? Sylvan. He uh, said... Oh, yeah, Sina? I understand. So... Corbin will say, what? No. what did he say? I did not catch that strange language. He said that uh, we are weak. And he said, uh, cannot be trusted. Well, he said, see, my lord, I told you they weren't that powerful. No need to be frightened. It doesn't sound like Acastus is really on our side. Mm. Just uh, I'll in, give him uh, a... uh, I'll say, uh, uh, fair Queen Valis, uh, would you uh, join us for a moment as we uh, travel to the palace? What do you wish to say here? You can say in front of everyone. Well, I would just wish to know about uh, your relationship with your husband. <laughs> Arcadia cut looks at him with a surprise. I do not mean to offend you. It is just that uh, I w this, this ritual is important. I was hoping that you could uh, assist us in some way. Carbon will take three steps away from where Ametrius is standing. And she, she, <laughs> she gives you the, uh, yeah, you know, uh, the face a woman makes when you done fucked up. I say, uh, <laughs> I understand. I do not mean to offend you. I just, I just want to uh, save Mitros like you do. A Castus is a Castus. Uh, I assume uh, I, when I look at this uh, this uh, companion Bella, is she his mistress? Don't say that whore's name in front uh, of me. Arcadia's okay, eyes grow wide as she takes a couple steps away. I, I understand how uh, difficult this is for you, but uh, is so it yes. possible for us to convince this Bella to uh, to, to 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 ply? Uh, Acastus into a banning slavery? And does he she, listen to her? She starts to glow. I, Arcadia looks at Amitrius and said, Remember what everyone has told us. As I, and I, I, my apologies, says, cool. Great Queen, I just, I just want to stop this typhoon. If you can help us in any way, then uh, please. A cassist is a cassus. He will do what he wants. All right. Well, I uh, uh, my apologies for offending you. I will go and uh, speak to him and s see what can be done. He wants to uh, start the Dragon Lords, correct? <laughs> uh, yes, he is trying. Maybe I can offer some assistance there. Maybe that would persuade him. Not that Corbin, good idea. I'll say we will go to the palace now and uh, inform you as to uh, if you agreed or not. Very well. Does anyone else have something to say or do? I don't have any ideas, sorry. Just uh, feel free to uh, butt in at any time. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we go to the palace and we ask to speak to the king. Okay. Uh, you go in. Uh, it's 
the others minus uh, Valus in there, and he looks up and says, "Oh, the great heroes of or of the Oracle, come in, come in." And I will say, uh, "You will be pleased to know that we have found a solution to your problem, uh, Great King. We have managed to." Uh, uh, get the gods together to cast this spell that can uh, save Mitros forever. Really? And he looks up and he's like, I still hear the rain. Indeed. Because uh, before the gods agree to cast the spell, they have required a minor concession from you. The gods need something from me? Well, gods always require tribute. They, well, uh, I might. they have agreed to cast a spell and save Mitras if Mitras gives up the slave trade. Uh, when you say that, um, Gaius and Bella would have been drinking and they kind of spit up their drink and start laughing. And you say, I understand that uh, the slave trade is a great profit for you, but uh, I also understand that uh, you will have no profit at all when your city drowns. Oh, but there's other ways, of course. Indeed. Of course. Yes. You, well, the guys will say, well, you could just destroy the temple. Ah, but uh, the temple is currently occupied by the gods themselves. Oh, they're gods? They'll be okay. Indeed, but do you think they will allow you to destroy their temple? Well, I mean, they allowed the great powerful Sidon to cast a spell, did they not? And they are offering to uh, undo this spell, counter it with their own magic. Well, if they are great and powerful gods, this never would have happened. I think you are being quite unfair and appointed Gaius. Is he not serving the very god that is threatening to destroy your city? And Gaius will say, oh, but the Lord Sidon, he's not wanting to destroy the city. He just wants to remind everyone who's in charge. Ah, uh, and how long will his reminder last if we don't do anything? As long as it needs. If anything, we can destroy the temple by ourselves. Uh, I will say then, I guess there is no problem at all if Sidon is a, a generous lord that just wants to give you a little reminder. Uh, we can just leave and the city will be fine. Guy says, please do. And what do you think about that, uh, great King Acastus? Acasta says, surely you, you two need to come down. Surely there's some other way that we could uh, come to our terms. Mm. Uh, Corbin will approach the king and, and uh, bow his head and say, uh, Greek king, perhaps in compensation I can help uh, you achieve your desire to restart the dragon lords. I know much of the old dragon lords and how to re and how and I obviously have the the crown, uh, so I, I surely can help you in reestablishing the dragon lords. Really? Um, uh, I'll where's step up and I say Orban is in fact the reincarnation of uh, kind of the dragon king. Really? I'll say yeah. Some 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 say that, but at very least I have much knowledge. Really? That's cool. Um, but one big question. Where's your dragon? If you're a dragon lord. Uh, he was sacrificed defending this city long ago. And uh, there are a lack of dragon eggs in the world, as you're well aware. Uh, obviously not. I have plenty of dragons. These are not dragons. They are just drakes. You know that. Ah, but if you... Uh, you have not met Icarus. No, I have not. Is he a true dragon? <laughs> he is. And he is uh, the one who gave me the eggs. Would Corbin uh, remember his dragon from his time as a dragon lord? Uh, he can roll a history. Did you say uh, his name is Icarus? Icarus. He would not. I know not of this uh, Icarus from my past, but, uh, well, if you have many eggs, then what what has uh, prevented you from uh, reestablishing the Dragon Lords in full, then? 
Uh, they need time to hatch, of course. Uh, yes, yes, but they need much more than that, as you well know, correct? Of course, and as you well know, there's more to it than uh, you coming in and saying that you could help. Ah, but I can help, and I... Do you know how to train your dragon? I do. <laughs> Perhaps we... can I, can I, wait, I mean, I, obviously, I have the knowledge. So, can uh, if it does he does he know how to train a dragon? Apparently. Well, maybe I, I I will whisper him a few few things that only a dragon trainer would know, and I um, and I'll say it in draconic, as I assume he knows draconic. He'll look at you, and it says, "Ah, you have gotten into the ancient scrolls. That's the old ways." old ways are the best. Uh, but if the old ways are the best, your dragon would still be here. I will say, uh, King Acastus, it has uh, come to my attention that you are a man that, wants, that does not just believe pretty words. Clearly, you want to see something happen before you agree to anything. Is that not right? Well, I don't know about getting rid of the slave trade. I can obviously come to some other agreement but I mean you know the minotaurs they need to another place I'll say perhaps we can agree that if the gods manage to first get rid of the rain that you will then get rid of the slave trade and not before then you will first have your uh, proof before you commit to anything hmm he looks over at the rest of the people and they kind of shrug and roll persuasion. All right. I will use inspiration on that. Come on, Paladin. <laughs> I have plus six, so. So he looks at you and it says, F they can stop this rain, and I do mean if, then sure, why not? We can get rid of the trade. Can I do an insight say, check on that? I will say, uh, do, I, do I have your oath on this, uh, Great King? Yeah, I can agree to it, yeah. Will you swear an oath? I swear no oaths to no one. Will you sign uh, a contract? Sure. And he says, Guys, draw up the contract. No, I think an oath is necessary in this case. I swear the gods no would oaths. not accept less. I swear no oaths to men. But not to men, but to gods. He swear said, the oath to Sidon, if you, if you must. Perhaps, perhaps to your wife. Wife. Besides, the slave trade would only be forbidden in the city, not outside of the city. And I will uh, look at Corbin with a glare. And I will say, uh, no more slave trade for Mitros. That was the deal that we uh, agreed with the gods. Yes, if the city of Mitros. So, no more slave trade in the city of Mitros. I could, I could agree to that, of course. So and, tell, uh, t are, are you willing to meet with the gods face to face to tell them that you have agreed so that uh, they can begin the ritual? Sure. Uh, will you be willing to join us at the Temple of the Five? Why not? Let's let's go now. All right. I'd like. I rolled an insight uh, check in the tower. Is, yeah, I did too. Is he being cagey? Very. Oh. I will uh, walk with him to the Temple of the Five in the party. And if we reach there, I will introduce him as the King Agastor. And I will say, uh, King Agastor has agreed that if your ritual succeeds, he will abolish slave trade from the city of Mitros. And the king says, yes, if you are able to stop this rain and this hurricane, I will agree to stop the slave trade in the city of Mitros. How do the gods respond to this? 
They are in agreement. And Valis says, you swear this. And he says, yes, I swear that there will be no more slave trade in the city of Mirtros. And uh, Amitrius will say, hold on a moment. That Bar means that Bar you Barbin will Barbin will motion him to be to, to be quiet. And, and say, uh, no, I cannot let I, this pass. I, 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 I will whisper <laughs> in your ear and I'll say, let us uh, save the city for now. And no. we can work on, on having a slave revolt later. No, my honor will not allow this. I will, I will say, uh, fair king, uh, it could be that this uh, agreement allows for a stipulation that you can trade outside of the city. And I do not believe that would be fair to the gods. Ah, but you said that the gods want me to abolish the slave trade in the city of Mirtros, which is what Indeed. I agreed to. Corbin will look to the gods and say, is that agreeable with you? Pythor just shrugs and Kara nods enthusiastically. Vulcan says, yes. Uh, and I will say, Vulcan, are you also all right if he tries to circumvent this by taking this slave trade outside of the city? Well. I just, I will, I, slavery is bad all around. I, I, will, I will pull Metrius aside and say, Metrius, you must take one victory at a time. Getting the slave trade out of the city is the, is the first step. I'll say to you, I am a, a sworn uh, champion of the uh, Divine Stallion, and uh, I will not willingly participate in such deception. Uh, it, is is it is not deception. It is not deception. He has said he will get rid of the slave trade in the city. I will be no part of this if I uh, will not first have my say to Vulcan, or I will feel that I have betrayed my own honor. Oh, have your say. I thought we already talked to Vulcan. Sorry. Yes, uh, I'll continue. say Vulcan. Uh, this this will allow him to take a slave trade outside of the city. Uh, I do not believe that was the intention of your uh, agreement. And Acastus will say, "Fine, fine. I, Acastus Archilander, will abolish the slave trade, and it will have no part in it." I'll say, very well, then, uh, thank you, uh, King, for your generosity. I look oh, to Nico looks to see if his fingers are crossed. <laughs> they are not. Mm. But yes, he says, I, uh, Acastus Arklander, will no longer be a part of the slave mm. trade. And, and, and I will say, and one more thing, King, uh, and you will actively work to prevent the slave trade within the city of Mitros. I will do not such thing. I told you it is done, it will be done. Don't push your luck, little one. I'll say if it is abolished, it will be against the law and uh, we can do something about it. I, again, I will swear that I will uh, have no, uh, there will be no, uh, the slave trade in the city of Mitros mm -hmm. will be no longer allowed. And and would you and would you grant us the heroes of the Oracle uh, the ability to help you in, in uh, enforcing this task? We have our own uh, guards. Well, yes, I, I just want to I just want to assist. Them. I will say well, I am satisfied with this, uh, Nico uh, Corbin. But little one, obviously, uh, heroes great as yourselves have way better things to do. And even even heroes can take care of smaller things, but I'll if, say your if, word is good enough for me, King. If he is satisfied, then I am satisfied. Okay. And the the four gods, they are also they nod and now and they say, Now leave us, we will uh, we will take care of what needs to be done. Say very well. Have you any need of protection or uh, magical regions or anything at all? Then uh, please let us know. We are at your service. Just wait outside. Okay. Uh, so when you y'all go outside, the uh, the door to the temple closes, and um, you kind of feel a few moments later, kind of feel the earth start to shake, and. Uh, the temple itself kind of lights up really bright. And uh, a few moments later, uh, 
the hurricane stops. Hmm. And, and the sun comes out. We completed a quest in one session, guys. I'm really impressed. Corbin will play Rocky like a hurricane on his bagpipes in celebration. Oh my, oh my god. Um, Arcadia is interested in going into the temple and seeing how the gods are. Yes, same. Roll me a strength to open the door. Um, she would like to help. She would like to help Emetrius. Okay. All right. Yeah, the door opens up easily. Uh, the gods, they are kind of slumped into their chairs, breathing heavily. Uh, uh, gods, do have you any need of uh, us? Can we do anything for you? Rest. Very well. If you want, we can guard this temple. Drink. From Pythor, of course. <laughs> we need... We need rest. And they look, um... Right now, they actually kind of look like crap. Corbin says, I will spread uh, the news of your great sacrifice and deeds for the city. Especially you, Pythor. Uh-huh. Let we us tell everyone that Sidon tried to drown Mitros, but uh, five gods stopped him. Yeah, that's before. a better way of, you know, painting the picture. <laughs> Sidon tried to kill everyone and drown the city, but the, f the four gods stood up for the people and uh, they saved everyone by undoing his weak magic. Yes, Sidon is always crying. He was crying like this when I was dating the Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, gods. Uh, perhaps uh, you can stay at the palace and recover. And uh, okay, and okay. Peace has been can. achieved in our lifetime. Let's <laughs> escort them to the palace then. Okay. Uh, Kyra will. Um, uh, Kyra and Valis actually will both. Um, Look at you, Amitris, expectantly. I'll say, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a deep breath and I'll say, all right, uh, you two can uh, ride upon my back. It will be quite difficult, but I'll do my best. And when they when they get on, um, you've had Kyra on you before, but when Valis gets on, you know, she's a, a smaller build woman, but it's like having another, like, having like another horse on top of you like she is small figured but surprisingly is very heavy uh, can i roll a saving throw if you want to carry them or can i just carry them you can carry them oh okay i will uh, walk slowly and strangely but i will do my best arcadia um goes to pythor and offers to help him and he will lead on you and he also is a little heavier than he looks. I mean, he's a big boy, but he is pretty heavy. Corbin will help. Okay. <laughs> Poor Vulcan. Vulcan <laughs> looks. Vulcan looks at uh, looks at uh, Nico and uh, Camos. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "No one carries the dwarf." And he will take one step and fall to one knee. But maybe a little help. He gets him up. Bends down and helps him. Uh, I cast Tensor's fl uh, Floating Disc. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> well! Nicely played! Emos. 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 I like it. Emos. Emos. <laughs> Let's see, how much can that carry? Maybe Is it a, like 200 pounds? Yeah, it's like 100 pounds. As I recall. No, that one might be more. Mm -hmm. 500 pounds. Oh. Yeah, he, he yeah. can definitely carry him. So, oh, heck, then I'm going to try to get Pythor on there, too. <laughs> this, is, this is hard. Between the gnome and my... I, I don't have that much strength. 
Corbin, Corbin's quite strong. That's true. But you're also super short, so how how are you? Hopefully. Yeah, Pythor is like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, like, all of his weight is on me, and you're just helping him move his left leg forward. <laughs> uh, th I don't think the spell requires concentration. Uh, da, 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 no, it's an see. hour. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. like, uh, it's kind of like Invisible Servant. Yeah, it's, oh, a, I, yeah, it's a ritual. I cast, well, it can be cast a, a ritual on, is it like, you know, is it, can I, would it be awkward if I just, uh, you know, took the time to cast the ritual twice? But you know what, I'm just going to cast it as, uh, it's a first level spell. I'm going to cast it twice. Okay. Hey. You know, a little bit of a flex here, you know? I like, I like. Since it's invisible, Corbin will stand under it and act like he's holding up Pyther. <laughs> <laughs> Camus um, casts both of those spells and, and flips his black hair around. <laughs> yeah. Just does the emo part. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so as y'all are heading out... Um, Light is coming down through the clouds, spilling out onto the like the ped pediments and the stones of the city, and uh, you can slowly see the citizens coming, uh, beginning to emerge from their homes. And uh, Acasis looks very pleased and says, "Excellent work! I knew I could trust you to handle this matter. Now, let's see about your rewards. Come to the chambers after you've put these." Uh, Gods to bed. Uh, Nicodemus, do you have Sky Right? Oh. I have to have it. I'll, I'll take I'll, till uh, tomorrow. If you could do that, we could send a message to the entire city. Let's send it at um... <laughs> Alright. So I would say probably about. Eh, about 20 minutes passes to get them all settled into their ch into chambers. Uh, um, Amitrius, you had the queen, so she will grab, as you lay her down, she'll grab your arm and says, come and see me before you leave the city. And he will say yes, my queen. Oh, Chibis. It's been 151 Chibis. Thank you, sir. Uh, so let me do something really quick. Da, da, da. I get to give them cheerbits because they get gold for every cheerbit they get gold. Uh, so let's see, 90. Oh god, I can't do math. It'll be 244. Oh, thank you, Spencer. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we go. Alright, so you get the gods laid down into bed. Uh, no, I. Uh, we were told to go to, what, King Acastus' chambers? Yes. Alright. So, you go down and uh, uh, you go into his chambers and you see him kind of laying on a bed. And uh, uh, the Bella lady is sitting there uh, hand-feeding him grapes. And he says, uh, now about your wee roared. And he pulls out a rolled parchment and hands it, uh, hands it out to whomever will grab it. Corbin will take it and take a look at it. Right, he says, This map will lead you to the last known whereabouts of the Ultros. It was my ancestor's ship, the mighty and legendary vessel of Esther Archelander, fierce of the Dragon Lords. There was a time when I thought I might claim it for myself, but well, I have no need of it now. You should know by now, obviously, that I am rebuilding the ancient order of the Dragon Lords in time. I will have a legion of dragon-mounted warriors under my command. Then we will have no more needs of <laughs> heroes and oracles. We shall drive back the titans with the power of the dragons, just as my forefathers did. But, in any case, this map will allow you to resume your so-called great labors. I thank you for the service you have done my city. You are dismissed. I will say thank you, King, and may we call you an ally? Of course, of course. Uh, uh, have you any other deeds that need doing? Uh, we would uh, gladly prove our uh, loyalty to you. 
Oh no, we have we we have our own uh, workers here. But you know, feel free to explore the city, of course, before you head out on your uh, journey. Very well. Have you any further need of us in the future? You need but summon us, and we will come to you at your command. Very well. I doubt it because I don't really need heroes anymore. But thank you for the offer. And Corbin was, was before he said, to you, is, uh, "Would it be possible for me to?" Uh, See your mighty dragon before I leave the city. I have not seen a dragon, a true dragon, in a long time. And he says, Very well, but just be careful. Of course, of course. Alright, uh, he is down in, t in, the, uh, down in the depths. Uh, if you wake him, make sure you bring him an offering. What does he prefer? What do all dragons prefer? Old, generally. Of course. Ah, uh, but this one prefers silver. Silver? Okay. What is an appropriate offering for such a great dragon? Well, uh, you said you are a dragon lord, so of course you should know this by now, yes? Most likely. Do I know? I don't know, do you? I don't know. Do I have to roll a history check <laughs> on that? Yeah. I mean, I assume I remember. My, my, my memory is a little spotty, so I don't always remember everything. Uh, some dragons prefer, you know, uh, you would think that, oh. No, I don't know much. <laughs> yeah, you don't know much, yeah. But anything, I, I would say you would know probably know that anything under, anything less than 100 gold is considered, or 100 silver oh, yeah. is considered. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It would have to be a fairly large amount. Correct. I'm going to roll something for you, Ingorgio. Uh-oh. Um, what would that be? What do you have to know? What would that be? Investigation or just history or what? Probably history. For what? Dragon Knowing how knowledge. much the dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just history. Yeah, uh, you you would know that pretty much anything less than uh, a hundred uh, hundred offerings per person would be considered uh, an insult. Um, Arcadia is very interested in meeting this dragon. All right. I will pass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would be a good idea. All right. Uh, Sounds expensive. And um, I'd like to uh, um, get an audience with uh, the Queen uh, Valis. Okay. Uh, it would probably be a little bit of time. Um, since they're weak, they would probably need a day rest before uh, they can accept visitors. Okay. All right. Um, what about Nico? Does Nico want to go see the dragon? Uh, yeah, he'd be interested in this. Very much. Alright. Uh, so, Nico, Corbin, Arcadia, is Kamos going, or no? I just don't have a uh, hundred gold to begin with. But silver, hundred silver. Hundred silver. A yeah, hundred gold worth of silver, I think he said. No, just a hundred silver. Oh. So we'll be fine. It's ten gold, okay, that's a lot more affordable. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, that's... I can afford that. Uh, all right, I'll but go you have to, But it has to be... It has to be in the form of silver, though. Correct. It's I not do have gold. 148 silver, so I think I'm good. I have 93 silver. We can always go by the bank and exchange. Yeah, I'll just deduct 10 gold and give it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Just, you can, yeah, he can convert it and all that crap. Okay, I'm deducting it now. 350. There we go. So we should do that now? Yeah, to yeah, deduct the uh, the silver. Suddenly, uh, uh, Mitrius wants to come. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Arcadia would look at him and say, "Just watch yourself." I know how you feel about dragons, and I feel the same way. But I want to learn about them. Remember? Assuming that we are nowhere in the palace, I will say, uh, "Do you not remember how I placated this arrogant king?" I've star I'm starting to learn the the game. And she nods and says, good. In my olden days, 
The only thing I would have wanted is to run up and punch that king in the face. <laughs> yes, he's come a long way since uh, the first session. <laughs> <laughs> well, even since the salamander. True. Also, where did we get 240 gold from? Uh, you had 93 in the party sheet still, and then Sven gave 151. Oh, thank you, Sven. For once, you're not killing us with uh, traps and monsters. Well, you're right. Uh, so don't give him any ideas. <laughs> don't give him any ideas. So we head down into uh, the depths, um, and you hear uh, loud snoring coming from down there. And uh, you see um, a great silver dragon laying atop a small fortune of silver coins. Uh, and then he wakes up and he goes, But why? And that's where we'll pick it up next week. Oh boy. <laughs> Does he speak common or draconic? He spoke in common. Oh, I speak your kind of anyways. I Just can to prepare, uh, Amicius will try to ask him about uh, the red dragon that burned his village. <laughs> oh, you can ask. Yes. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so we will pick it up with the meeting of a dragon, an actual silver a, dragon. Awesome. A silver adult dragon. Yes. Great. But his dun, kids dun, are dun. copper. Is there some dragon lore that I don't know? I don't know. There might be. But yeah, that was uh, that was fun. We had, we had some fun. Yeah, uh, it was a great session. We got a lot done. I had no idea we would ever complete that quest today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought it was yeah, I didn't think so either. I was like, oh, that's gonna be. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering how y'all would get uh, how y'all would complete it too. There, you know, with the four different options, but we got it done. I still think sacrifice and Nico over and over again would have worked. Uh, one hundred thousand times. One hundred and ten percent would not have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Side eye is not stupid. All right, so yeah, we'll be back here next week. It's the thirty-first already. Holy cow! Yes. Unbelievable Jeez. that the month ends so quickly. I know. Yeah, it does. But all right. Uh, so yeah, thanks, guys. Um, all right. Thanks for the game. Yeah. Yeah. I'll thanks. See you next. Take see care, you everybody. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, too. everyone. All right, stream. Thanks for hanging out today. Uh, that was fun. We got a lot of crap done. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week when they meet an actual dragon. You never know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, and we'll be back here. My next game will be... Uh, yeah, next Sunday, actually. Um, so yeah, if you miss any of this episode, it'll be up on YouTube sometime tomorrow. Uh, or sometime this week, because I'm really bad at remembering to upload crap. Uh, but anyways, thanks for hanging out, and we will see you later.